Okay, so I don't know if I'm live or not right here, but um, imagining that I am, I'm just going to go and check to see that I actually am on my channel. Yes, so I'm live right now. Okay, perfect. So today's video is, is going to be in live format. So make sure you stick around towards the end of this stream because I'm going to do a, a live Q&A. Just any questions that you've got, just, just kind of let me know. Um, so we're going to talk about a series of things going on in crypto XRP today. And then we're also going to get into the big question of kind of what I really think about price predictions. Um, obviously we're talking about general crypto price predictions because it could be any token. Um, but you know, most of us are invested in XRP, so we will have a little bit of a focus on XRP as well. So, uh, I just want to let everyone know that before we kind of get started, that I do have a video coming out on the altcoin advantage channel tonight at about 5 PM, which isn't, isn't very long, uh, from now. The video itself are, is me highlighting 15 uh, tokens to look for in 2024. So if you're interested in having a look at, at that and what that kind of looks like, then make sure you are uh, subscribed to that channel and that you're taking a look as well, because uh, we, we've, we've put some effort into that. Um, and I think it might, I think it'll be of value. So what I'm doing right now is just making sure that I am in fact live and I can see people in here and then we're going to get into the meat of meat of it. Let me just see that I'm actually talking, what that kind of looks like then. I am. Okay, this is all perfect. It's going well. Okay, so um, first of all, yes, I'm going to acknowledge everyone in here. Jason, thank you for, for being here. MJB is from Japan. Welcome. Crypto Dan, welcome again. Um, Robbie London, you're live. Yes, I am. Uh, hello from Ukraine, and somebody said Merry Christmas. So, well, well, a bit late to the party on that one, I think. Um, so, I will remind you again, there is a video linked in the description of this video that will take you to the Altcoin Advantage channel. There's a video coming out tonight, 15 coins to look for in 2024, if you're interested in that. Um, I will spoil it. One of them is XRP, obviously. <laughs> the final three you probably have never heard of, and they're ultra degen type type plays. Anyway, so let's get into what's happened in the news today. Thank you. I, I do see all of your questions towards the end of this. Um, we're probably going to take about 20 minutes talking about the news. Then we're going to have probably, you know, 10 minutes at the end for Q&A. So save your questions. Um, if it does get very busy in here, um, then probably the only way I'm going to see the questions are super chat, or at least be able to keep on top of them. So you don't have to super chat. I just want to say that right now. Um, hello, Alan. Hello, Minted. Uh, it's great to see so many of you in here. Okay, so let's get into some of the, the news pieces. Um, I'm cutting in and out. Oh, man. Um, okay, let's try and increase the bit rate here. Not that I know what that means. I have no idea what that means, but we're going to try and do it anyway. Stream. I can't change the bit rate. Am I am I cutting in and out for everyone? Can you let me know if if I am cutting out? Leave a one in the chat. If I'm fine, then put uh put a two in the chat. Okay, it feels like it feels like it's fine. Okay. All right, so let's get into it. Um, really, the big question in all of this that I want to get into before we get into the live Q and A. Um, the big question is, are price predictions actually even useful? So I'm going to answer that towards the end before the Q and A, but we're going to get into some news news points that um, have, have happened over the last seven days. These are kind of also included in my news letter. That's a free newsletter that comes out every Thursday. I talk about what's going on in the news, mostly about XRP and Ripple, uh, anything ISO related. I get into all of that and then give my own thoughts. So this video is me in full form giving my own thoughts about these these things that are happening. The first the first big thing that's really happened in the last seven days is, you know, all the data coming out about the Bitcoin ETF and how much money is under asset uh, is under management. And there's a billion dollars in assets um, under management by BlackRock specific to the Bitcoin ETF. Um, and, you know, there's loads of data on that. It's like, OK. 
you know, why are we focusing on, on the ETF in the first place? And I, I tend to think that focusing on the ETF, it's just, it's just, it's just very blinded to like the reality of things. Uh, just to go over it again, when an ETF happens, all that's happened is, all that's all that's happened is, is a, there's been a, a company that's decided to buy a massive amount of Bitcoin, and then they offer shares, basically shares in their portfolio of Bitcoin to their clients. So their clients will pile in and they start buying shares of this ETF, but they're not buying the Bitcoin. The Bitcoin's already been bought at that point by the main company. And so the only reasons why an ETF would cause price appreciation is either that massive purchase upfront of Bitcoin, but that's not gonna happen on the day, is it, right? Because they have to offer it to their clients on the day. So they have bought that over time in the months or weeks leading up to the ETF launch. Um, and so from that perspective, from the mass purchase of Bitcoin, the, the, the price has already been baked in. Like, you know, the purchase of that Bitcoin is already baked into the price, which could be a lot of the reason why we've, saw the pr we've seen the price of Bitcoin go up so much recently. Um, and then the only other reason why the price could go up is just retail FOMO, people thinking that the price is gonna continue going up. The only difference is, is that every time an ETF has come out for, every time an ETF comes out, it's at the reversal point in the market. So, I mean, I'll, I'll ask everyone in the audience, what kind of moves have we seen in Bitcoin over the last two months, right? Has it been up or has it been down? Uh, let's, let's, yeah, let's get some community engagement. Has it been up or down? see how many people are actually listening. <laughs> Maybe no one's actually heard it. Oh, there is a little bit of a delay. Um, so we're working with a little bit of a delay here as well. Um, the point is, I haven't seen anyone, <laughs> anyone leave an answer. Um, the point, the, the crypto has been going up. B Bitcoin's been going up over the last couple of months. Um, and then ETF comes around and it's a reversal. It's not the big crazy price prediction, uh, the price movement that we thought. It comes at a reversal moment, and you know Bitcoin now really probably doesn't have much left. If there is any upside, it's only marginal. Um, but really, Bitcoin is kind of over at this point. Until the next time, um, at least that's that's the consensus that I'm coming to. And so. Now what happens is you have the Bitcoin kind of leveling out, perhaps going down a little bit, and then that's when alt season takes over. So the last week that we, uh, last lose letter we talked about, I showed that we, we are now, in a, we're actually in alt season right now. And although it doesn't necessarily seem like that, there are warning signs that, that alt, coin, alt season is here. One of those warning signs is that, you know, you get these random tokens, like there was a token UMA, I don't know what it does, but it went up like 150% the other day, just in one day. Um, I know that because I was trying to trade it. <laughs> and I, I was like, oh, it can't go up anymore. I'm going to go short. <laughs> and then it continued to go up and I got I got stopped out. Um, so I was very aware of, and every day there's a new token that's going up that many percent. And these aren't like ultra low caps. These are like kind of like mid to low caps. So how it goes, the flow of the flow of these pumps on lead up to an alt season is that you get the ultra low caps pumping like crazy. Then you get, as it moves up in the size of, of token, they start pumping in that order. So that's why you get XRP last because it's one of the main altcoins, right? So all the money has to flow through all the other altcoins come round and round and round the system. Then it gets to XRP and XRP goes last, which is why it's so hard to hold XRP because you're basically waiting the whole time. Um, but the, the the ETF thing, I just think is a narrative that people are following and it's kind of just this distraction. It's not, like it never was supposed to do anything. Like it's not, it should never have been interesting, but obviously the world's getting carried away with it. Um, the Bitcoin community get carried away with it. It's just not that important. Um, <clears throat> now, the second piece of news is about David Schwartz. And this is, I found this quite interesting. So David Schwartz basically tweeted back at Franklin Templeton. Now, Frank, Frank, Franklin Templeton, I can't speak, is an asset manager that holds $1.4 trillion under management. So if you imagine BlackRock is like 40 trillion, 
Franklin Templeton is 1.4, so I guess a lot smaller than, than BlackRock, but still, like, a massive entity. And so he's talked back to them, basically touting at the XRPL as a really good uh, blockchain to be to be working on for the for these enterprise in institutions. And what I will say is, I've I've been in conversations with very corporate people, and these corporate people are completely and utterly enthralled with Ethereum and Solana. I can maybe get behind the Solana thing, but why Ethereum? And we, we all, we, I mean, we already know. Somebody's getting paid. So I, I do think that the whole Ethereum thing, they're completely blindly in love with Ethereum um, because it's probably lining their pockets in some other way. Um, or just like Bitcoiners and Ethereum people and sometimes XRP people, you kind of get focused on your blockchain and you think that's the best one, just the best one, forget about all the other ones. Um, and so what I think has happened is that Franklin Templeton has been so focused on Solana and Ethereum that David Schwartz is like, the XRPL is better than both of those. Like, what are you doing? Um, he didn't do it as, as aggressive as that because I, I'll tell you why I think it, that, that is the reason for that. I think what, what David Schwartz has done here is a pitch. I think he's pitching. I think it's a strategic to get Ripple involved with these massive asset managers. Um, and, you know, landing a client like um, Franklin Templeton would just be a massive thing. Um, and so, you know, I was thinking about, you know, all the different ways that Ripple would even help Franklin Templeton in the first place. Like, what, what are Franklin Templeton missing? Um, what would they get if they worked with Ripple and they worked on the XRPL? Um, and so I kind of listed a few things down. One of those, obviously, is the cross-border payments. We know that that would, that would make everything a lot easier. Um, you've got liquidity management, which is obviously the XRP token. Tokenization of real-world assets, because, I mean, Ripple is making big moves in tokenization, by the way. I don't know if anyone realizes that, specifically in real estate in Hong Kong. Quite interesting to go and take a look. Then you've got, like, the automated compliance processes. It's sustainable, so it makes or any of their finance moves, Franklin Templeton's finance moves, sustainable and green. Um, you've also got market making and you've got the cost saving as well, in addition to that. And there's so many other things. So there's loads of ways that the XRPL can help Franklin Templeton. And I think rather than sending in a boring email, it's quite an interesting strategy to try and get your foot in the door with such a large asset manager via Twitter um, via such a big account because his account is so big and they will see that. So I, I thought it was very interesting. Most people are kind of disregarding it as, oh, just another tweet that David Schwartz has put out. I just think there's a bit more strategy to it than most people think. Next, we have the uh, how BlackRock, I think Larry Fink was touted as saying this, the XRP ETF is not in the cards. <clears throat> now, I dug a little deeper into this and, you know, went a few articles deep and realized that BlackRock actually didn't really say that at all. Um, and that we've all seen those kind of interviews. And if you haven't, it's very easy to go and look. You know, when Larry Fink, who's the CEO of BlackRock, when he was asked about an XRP ETF, he was stumbling over his words. He didn't know quite what to say. And it was very, very telling. So just because you see XRP ETF is not in the cards, in the headlines, give me a break. Um, there's a comp that you like I talked about in, in December on the altcoin advantage channel the XRP ETF video um, and that was back in December there are European companies big asset managers um, that are doing that are trying to put together an XRP ETF we thought it was coming in December because they said it was going to be late December um, it's not there yet but the, the the conversations are there they're being had and so I understand that these companies in in Europe, are nowhere near the size of, let's say, even Franklin Templeton or BlackRock. But because these conversations are happening, there is no way that those conversations aren't happening at BlackRock as well. Um, so you pair that with, with the fact that these XRP ETFs are being discussed and being put in place in Europe, right? And the awkwardness of Larry Fink in responding to an XRP ETF and 
the awkwardness of when that guy at, at um, the World Economic Forum forum uh, asked him about uh, an XRP ETF, and and he was like, "Oh, I love these games we play." <laughs> it's like, did, did anyone remember that clip? So there's lots of awkwardness of people talking about an XRP ETF. Don't tell me that it's not on the cards. So go away, BlackRock. We don't we don't want you anyway. Uh, story number four is Ripple's consideration of IPO outside of the US. So it's a tough situation because Brad Garlinghouse has obviously said many times the whole we would love to IPO in the, in America, but it's what's the word he used? Hostile. It's a hostile regulatory environment in the US. And it's led Ripple to go out and pursue 90% of their business outside of the USA. So it does make sense for them to IPO outside of the USA. Um, I've kind of got a list of like four places, three or four places that I think they could possibly IPO if they don't IPO in America. Um, those being the UK. Uh, I don't like that idea because I don't think the UK's regulations are very nice. Um, Dubai, Singapore or Japan. I would imagine going public in one of those regions. But I, what I will say is that isn't the ideal situation for anyone who's invested in Ripple. It's just not. If, if you go public on the stock market, the American stock market, then the valuation for the company is going to be higher. And if you've invested in Ripple, all you want is the valuation of, the, of Ripple to be higher. So that's the ideal situation. He also said it's probably not going to happen soon. I think, do you know what I know what I think? I think they're probably just going to wait until it's not a hostile regulatory environment in America and then IPO. I also think there'll be a load of IPOs around it as well. So, um, but obviously we want it to be in the US because we want to make some money. Okay, so let's get to the question before the Q&A. Um, and that is, what do I think about price predictions? Are they even useful? And I think like the, what we have to look at here is, this is all my opinion, of course, like you can have your own and let me know in the comments. I think my problem comes with the word, my, my problem comes with the intention of a price prediction. So when an intention, or well, it's like a received intention, the perception, a received intention is a perception. <laughs> my brain not working. So the perception is this price will happen and my assets will be this value at that price. Um, the problem is, is that that's all in a potential environment, okay? So the problem that I have is actually the word potential in all of that, because it's not, it's, not, it's not really grounded in anything uh, that serves you as an individual. The, I mean, the price predictions can be based on like science, maths, biology, um, historical data, but none of those are actually useful to you. It's all kind of like a dream lab environment that those numbers are, are, are pulled out. And what I mean by that is like, these price predictions are, are very accurate, but the variables have to be set in order to come to that prediction price. So in reality, you will know very well that we don't live in a dream environment. We actually live in reality. And there's countless other things that play in uh, to, to what an asset is going to be worth. So, you know, a piece of news could come out to say that there's no more gold in the ground and gold would go up. Right. But that's not like a price prediction didn't get it there. There were other events that got it there. Um, and no one will accurately get that because there's just too many factors involved. Um, and so I think. When you're looking at price predictions, and specifically, we only have really price predictions for two things. One, one is that we want to figure out or look at the dream eventuality that the price gets to that point, and then this is what our portfolio value is at the end of the day. Um, but the other role these price predictions should play is actually, in my opinion, just part of the puzzle that allows you to be in a position to think clearly. So. If you transition price predictions from my portfolio will be valued at this much at this price and transition that over to these price predictions are helping to inform what I'm going to do, 
it's part of the puzzle. I think you can, I, th I think this is a better way to strategize about your portfolio um, and, and kind of giving balance to the different factors that can be involved. So one of, one of these examples, a very simple example. If you're 80 years old and you've got like a $50 XRP in mind, right? And you're you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell when it gets to fifty, or I'm gonna take some profits when it gets to fifty dollars. Um, in reality, oh, how long will that take? Is it gonna happen next year, or is that gonna happen in twenty years time? And you're like, hang on a second, if you're eighty, twenty years time, like the chances are you're gonna be under the ground. What what? What? How does that price prediction and formulating your exit strategy based on that price prediction? How does that help you in in the life that you have left? Now, obviously, this is different if you're twenty. It's very different because then you've got different factors involved, and you've actually got one of the most important factors in all of this, which is time. <laughs> right? That's a really valuable asset, um, and if you have some time, then you know, these price, predict price predictions have more of a weighting and your risk tolerance has left less of a weighting because you can actually assume more risk at that point. And so everyone has, there's probably no two people in here that are the same age on the same date. So what I mean by that is everyone, even on one of the factors out of the multitude of factors that you need to consider, even on one of the factors being age, there's probably no one watching in this audience who will ever watch this video that is the same age on the same date. So you are all different. Therefore, you all need a different strategy and a plan. Um, and so that's kind of that's kind of my my view. Um, I'd love to know what what you think about price predictions and what other factors that you would consider because there's so, there's so many different factors involved. Um, but we are at the hour, and now it's time for the ten minutes of Q and A. So I'm going to open it up to the comments here and start uh, answering some questions. So happy to actually just check to see how many people are in here. We've got 350 people watching live. Thank you very, very much. So now is the time, if any, to get your questions in. Um, and we'll, we'll start getting the, into them. I'm trying to keep up with, the, with the, all the comments here. So Hoover, the FUD killer, and, and every anytime I'm answering a question, I'm going to pin that question so you can go just see it at the top um, of the of the live chat here. No one knows the price. Why are all influencers putting up uh, millions? How many XRP you need to be a millionaire? So very easy answer, in my opinion. The first answer I think is the most reasonable one to consider is that a video of that nature and a video of that title it will just guarantee views. Um, and so, you know, that's something. Um, the other the other thing is, it, it, I mean, really, is it just about the views? I, I will say, and I've, I've made those videos before um, in my growth phase, trying to grow the, the channel. As, as I've got more of an audience, I, I have been very much more aware of the impact of my words, even if I don't think my words are that special because it's just my opinion and I'm just sharing my opinion. Um, but, you know, I, I understand my role in things and I've just got to be, you know, I've got to be aware of that. And so I won't make any of those videos ever again. Like I'll never make that video again. Um, but is my sound actually low? or is your volume just low? Um, I would say probably turn your volume up. Um, so I think, you know, I, I really do think it's about getting views, um, if I'm honest. Um, let's see any more of these.
Whoa, loads of questions. Um, do I have any, do I have any plans to make videos with Jimmy Valley from Bell Hill Capital? Um, I'm I'm certain at at some point we will certainly make another video together for sure. Um, okay, this is a good question. Um, could you do a video of all the partnerships accomplished by Ripple in a timeline? Include the court case. So. Uh, yes. So next week, I think it's either Monday or Tuesday. I'm going to go live on this channel, regardless of how long it takes to stream it. I'm doing a video where I'm listing every single Ripple partner and going through like, here's the article that shows it, blah, 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 blah. Um, it potentially is going to be a massive video. I don't, it could take an hour. It could take four hours, but I'm going to be there grinding away, listing all of them. So it's the kind of video that you leave in the background or you, you kind of watch over a certain period of time. You know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a big video um, and that's going to be live streamed. So you're going to see me live go through the pain <laughs> um, of doing that. So. Um, OK, next question is Alan Maloney. Um, hello, welcome, Alan. Um, any insight on the polysign situation? Um, you know, the polysign situation is super strange. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I do have insider contact. I know that sounds ultra fancy, but it's like, that's real. I do. Um, and I basically, I've been nudging him, asking him for updates. And he's like, it's super weird. I don't know what's happened. This, the auction went silent and no one knows why. And so he's on the inside and he, I think, Something something weirds happened. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm I'm heavily invested in PolySign personally, so like I do want that to be uh, kind of resolved. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so Chris Marshall has said, no, an XRP ETF is not happening. It's just, they just answered awkwardly because they can't be seen to affect the markets. Um, sure. I, I, I'll accept that as, as a potential reason. The only, the only thing is, is that, you know, Europe is already talking about an XRP ETF specifically. Um, so go to that video and, and have a watch of that and do that research. Um, like that conversation is happening. So, um, not potentially, you know, maybe all those things can be true too. Um, that they didn't want to affect the market. Maybe they also don't want to talk about it because they've had conversations about it. Maybe, you know, there's so many different reasons. I'm just kind of bringing up a few. Um, let's see. How long have we got? Three minutes left on this. Yeah, so Neo Charm, thanks for being here again. Um, I haven't seen one complete list of the Ripple partners yet. Yeah, nobody has. It's hard work. <laughs> I've had some. I've had somebody working on it for like three weeks getting this list together. Um, all I will say is that there's um, a lot of partnerships that existed that don't now. There's a lot of partnerships by way of partners. So you've got you've got multiple layers of this. You've got people who are actually partnered with Ripple. Then you've got people uh, who partner with the partners of Ripple. It's like, where do you draw the line? So I've seen people talk about 500 uh, partners of Ripple, but there's not 500. It's really, in it's really interesting. So we've put some time into this and I'm just going to live stream going through them all. And it might take me hours, but I know some of you will watch the entire thing crazy. Crazy people. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, so Chris, um, that that's what I said earlier in this video. You know, there's no chance of an IPO. Yeah, there's no chance of an IPO in a hostile regulatory environment in America. That that's that's what it is. Um, uh, Crypto Dan, I don't know S 
HX, I'm sorry. Yeah, and so Chris, again, I agree with you here. Like when we talk about ETFs, it doesn't really impact anything on the day of the ETF. It can kind of run up. Um, I know I see Hoover the FUD killer. Europe, Europe is ETPs, not ETFs, right? Yeah, so ETFs are a type of ETP. So it's just that's just a terminology categorization thing. So, um, and and just look, I'm not I'm not trying to pump up an XRP ETF here. XRP ETFs are the exact same as a Bitcoin ETF. Doesn't really do much. <laughs> it it does something on the lead up as as that entity buys a large amount of XRP, but they can do that over time without affecting the market price that much. Um, then it's just retail FOMO at that point. Um, as to how it affects the price. Um, I will say though, like an XRP ETF and an $8 XRP all at the same time kind of feels a bit like, um, you know, we don't need that. That 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 That's kind of it over. That's one of the signals that, that an alt season would be over, in my opinion, that you get, you get like the XRP price makes it up to kind of you know, it's had a run and then you've got an XRP ETF. It's like, uh, this is a lot of different triggers going off. You know, there's there's a there's a price target trigger going off. There's an event based trigger going off. There's the historical data that's sounding alarm bells with like, you know, how it comes at reversals. So, you know, when you're when you're looking at an exit strategy, like these are all things you have to. You have to you have to count. Um, and then about AMMs. So I don't know too much about the current situation fund AMMs, to be completely honest. Um, I know that they've got more yays than nays. And potentially, yes, they need one more vote to make it happen. Um, David Schwartz posted something recently that was quite complicated and complex, but he tried to make it really simple. But it was about how, you know, if you have your assets in an AMM, if the asset value goes way down, you would lose less by being in the AMM. Um, but you would also, your asset wouldn't grow as much if you were in the AMM, but you generate a yield. So it's like a, you know, swings and in, in balances. Um, Akam Grin, have you got a video on why the XRP price is being suppressed? N uh, no, it's probably more of a Black Swan Capitalist video. Um, and, uh, you know, they're all they're all manipulated in some way. The whole market's manipulated. So it's kind of it's kind of tough. Um, James, am I coming to the Gold Coast? Um, there are like very penciled plans for that. Um, the plan is actually to come over and film with uh, Wall Street Bull. Um, but that's a very loose plan, uh, but I think it's quite interesting. Um, so with that said, um, we're going to do this again at some point, but make sure you tune in to next week's video, uh, where I talk about every single Ripple partner, um, after three weeks of research. Uh, and that'd be a massive live stream. So come in, bring some popcorn, um, enjoy me suffering and, uh, uh, and that's all, really. Um, thank you very much uh, for spending your time with me here. If you can, click like before you leave. Um, make sure you do something nice for someone today. Um, it's right around the corner. It's good times are right around the corner. We just have to hold, hold a little bit longer. All right. Thank you very much. Hit like on your way out. Subscribe. Goodbye.